Hey guys, Jin here. This is an update to my previous Bowl Lightning build, going more into tankiness to get further into the abattoir. It does tier 1 to 11 without any uber uniques or tiers of blood glyph grinding, and I'll look to keep pushing further. And if you enjoy or learn something from the video, consider liking and subscribing to help with the channel's growth. It is much, much appreciated. Now let's get to the build. So starting with the skill tree, we're going to take two in Fireball, because we're going to use that as our enchantment. Then we're going to go down to core skills. We're going to take one in Potent Warding, one in Devastation, and three in Elemental Dominance. Then we come down here to our defensive skills. We're going to take one into Flame Shield, just by itself, no extra nodes. One into Teleport, and we're going to get Shimmering Teleport. Then we're going to take one into Elemental Attunement. This is going to let us reset the cooldown of one of our defensive skills every 10 seconds. It's only a 5% chance to reset on Lucky Hit, but we do so many instances of damage that this will basically always go off within its cooldown. Then we're going to take one into Ice Armor with none of the extra nodes as well. Then we come down to our Conjuration skills. And we're going to take one into Ice Blades. And we're going to go down to Summoned Ice Blades. So 20% of Enhanced Ice Blades cooldown reduction is applied to our other skills. And then we're going to take one in Lightning Spear. And we're going to take Invoked Lightning Spear. So when we use Unstable Currents, we're going to have a lot of Lightning Spears going around. And this is going to allow those Lightning Spears to stun enemies for two seconds when critically striking. So that's a lot of CC. Then, of course, we're going to take 3 in Conjuration Mastery, so we deal 3% increased damage for each active Conjuration, which is quite a lot, considering how many Conjurations we're going to have. Then we're going to take 2 in Align the Elements, 3 into Mana Shield, and 3 into Protection. Then we come down here to our Mastery Skills, we're going to take 5 into Ball Lightning, and then we're going to go for Wizard's Ball Lightning. Then we take 1 into Static Discharge, and 3 into Invigorating Conduit. Then we come down here to our Ultimate Skills. We're going to take the Permafrost Passive, 1 point, 1 point in Hoarfrost, and 3 points in Frigid Breeze, which is currently bugged, so it works for all Elemental Skills. So, a bunch of extra mana regen there. Then we take Unstable Currents. Then we take one into Coursing Currents, and three into Electrocution. And for our key passive, we're going to take Veer's Mastery. So that's it for the skills, let's go to the Paragon board. So for the Paragon board, we're going to start with the Tears of Blood Glyph in the first board. And we're going to make sure we get all of the normal nodes here to boost up the damage as much as possible. Then for our second board, the Enchantment Master board, we're going to put in the Elementalist Glyph. Then for our third board, we're going to take the Ceaseless Conduit board, and we're going to put in the Destruction Glyph for the Critical Strike damage, of course. Then we move up to the fourth board, this is the Frigid Fate board, and we're going to put the Adept Glyph in here, so obviously a lot of Mastery skill damage from here. And we're also going to pick up the Frigid Fate node, so we deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 10% of the total amount of your bonus damage with cold. And then we're going to take the Guarded Rare node, and also the Oppressive Rare node, for some extra damage reduction against vulnerable enemies, and some extra vulnerable damage. So for our fifth board, we're going to take the Burning Instinct board, and we're going to put the Charge Glyph in here, just so we can get to the next board, without spending too many points here. And we're going to also take the Safeguard Rare Node. Then for the 6th board, we have the Searing Heat board. And we're going to put in the Control Glyph, for that extra damage to crowd-controlled enemies. And for our 7th and final board, we're going to take the Static Surge board. And we're not going to take the Legendary Node this time. But we're going to put in the Flame Feeder Glyph here, so that's going to give us damage to burning enemies, as well as you deal 10% increased direct damage to burning enemies, which is another reason we are using the Firebolt enchantment. 
So that is it for the Paragon board. The build planner in the description below is going to have this whole board as well as the skills you need, the enchantments, the gear, etc. So check that out. Now let's move on to the enchantments. So for the enchantments, we're going to use Ice Blades in the first slot. So for every 40 seconds in cooldowns you spend, you spawn an Ice Blade on a random enemy. So we're going to be using a lot of cooldowns, so we get a lot of Ice Blades. Plus we get the advantage of Ice Blades modifiers. And for our other enchantment, as I mentioned, we're going to take the Firebolt enchantment to apply the burning damage. Next up, the Vampiric Powers. So we're going to take Prey on the Weak here for our first power to deal the increased damage to vulnerable enemies, and enemies are vulnerable while affected by a Vampiric Curse from our other Vampiric Powers. Then we take Ravenous for our second power, so lucky hit, up to 20% chance to increase our attack speed by 40% of total movement speed for 6 seconds, so that is a lot of extra attack speed there. Third Glyph, we're going with a Curse of Touch, so on lucky hit, up to a 44% chance to inflict Vampiric Curse on enemies, so, more vulnerable basically, and some extra damage from our souls. For our fourth power, we're going to take the Domination power, so deal extra damage to enemies who are stunned, immobilized, frozen, or feared. And if they're injured and not elite, they instantly die. And for our last power, we're going to take Infection, so hitting enemies with direct damage infects them with pox, eight times will deal poison damage. So that is what props our fourth stack of the Talrash's Iridescent Loop. So if you want, at the start of the Abattoir, you can always swap out Infection after getting its bonus for Feed the Coven. And this will give on Lucky Hit, Conjuration Attacks have up to a 60% chance to restore 10 primary resource and increase your damage by 10%. And you'll also still have the fourth stack of Talrash's Loop that Infection gives you whilst getting the bonus from Feed the Coven. And to use these 6 powers, you're going to need 7 packs of Ferocity total, 6 packs of Divinity, and 1 pack of Eternity. So now for the gear. For the Helm, we're going to want to get Total Armor, Cooldown Reduction, Max Life, and all Stats. If you can't get those, then look for CC Duration, or Intelligence. As for the aspect, we're going to use Everliving, so we take 25% less damage from CC'd or vulnerable enemies. If you have a Shaco, then you would use that instead, and you would move Everliving to the chest piece. For the chest piece, you're going to want Total Armor, Damage Reduction from Close, Damage Reduction from Burning, and Damage Reduction. If you can't get that, then get Damage Reduction from Distant, or Max Life, or All Stats. As for the aspect, we're going to use Mage Lords. So the Veer's Mastery Keep Passive also grants us 9% damage reduction for each close enemy, up to 27%. Next up we have the Gloves, and we're going to want to look for Critical Strike Chance, Attack Speed, Lucky Hit, and Lightning Critical Strike Damage. If you can't get those, then look for Lucky Hit Restores Primary Resource, or All Stats. As for the Aspect, we're going to be using Storm Swell. So we deal 21-30% to 30%, increased damage to vulnerable enemies while we have a barrier. You could also use Gravitational here. Next up, we have the Pants. I removed Tybalt's Will because I wanted extra survivability, so we're using these Pants instead, and we're going to look for Total Armor, Damage Reduction from Close, Damage Reduction from Burning, and Ranks into Ball Lightning. If you can't get those, then look for Damage Reduction from Distant, Damage Reduction, or Damage Reduction when Injured. As for the aspect, I am using Disobedience here. Next up we have the Boots, and I am using Flicker Step here, since now I'm using Unstable Currents. This helps out with the cooldown on that tremendously, so each enemy we evade through reduces our active ultimate cooldown by 4 seconds, up to 10 seconds per evade. So your Unstable Currents will basically be on all of the time. Plus we also get some all stats, movement speed, ultimate skill damage, and some really nice damage reduction from close enemies. Next up we have the one-handed weapon, and we're going to want to use a dagger here, and obviously look for the highest item power possible for the base damage. So we're going to look for all stats, intelligence, mastery skill damage, and vulnerable damage. If you can't get that, then look for crit damage, damage to close, or lightning crit damage. For the aspect, we're going to be using control, so we deal 34% more damage to immobilized, stunned, or frozen enemies. Next up we have the amulet, 
And so for the amulet, we're going to look for total armor percent, mastery skills, damage reduction from close, and cooldown reduction. If you can't get those, then look for damage reduction, and damage reduction from distant. So pretty straightforward there, and for the aspect, we're using gravitational. So ball landing orbits around you deals 38% increased damage. Although you could also put Storm Swell here instead, and put Gravitational on the Gloves. I'm not sure which I like better. Now, for the Rings, we're using Talrash's Iridescent Loop for the first ring. So obviously we get non-physical damage, lucky hit chance, resource gen, and cooldown reduction. But we get the unique aspect, so for each type of elemental damage we deal, gain sense of 15% increased damage for 4 seconds. So if you get a perfect roll on this, that is 60% increased damage. For our second ring, we're going to look for something with crit chance, resource generation, vulnerable damage, and close damage. If you can't get that, then look for crit damage or max life. And as for the aspect, we're using prodigies here, so we get 15 to 25 mana whenever we use a cooldown. So this is a great source of mana, which works with the resource generation. Last but not least, we have the focus, and we're going to look for something with highest item power, of course. And the affixes we'll look for are Critical Strike Chance, Cooldown Reduction, Resource Generation, and Mana Cost Reduction. If you can't get those, then look for All Stats or Intelligence. As for the aspect, we are using Conceited here, so deal 25% increased damage in my case, while we have a Barrier active. Now, as for the gems, we're going to be using the Green Gems in the Weapons and Offhand, Red Gems in the Armor, and the Skulls in the Jewelry. So that pretty much wraps up the build. Don't forget to check out the planner in the description below. And if you enjoyed or learned something from this video, please like and subscribe to help a guy grow his channel. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye!